We think in this one we are just talking about how to take a gradient of a certain function, okay? It's going to be a multivariable function, the way it's going to have multiple input variables. In this case, it will have uh, three, which is the most usual full one. We don't really work with, especially in calculus, three. You're not going to run into, like, in the course, in you know, whatever the, 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 the list of things learned in that course are. You're not going to really run into many uh, cases in which you will be over three independent variables. So what I'm talking now, I'll be doing it with a free independent variable function with independent variables x, y, and z. And I'm going to be showing you how to get the gradient of a function. So let's say we have a function of x, y, and z. And this function, I'll make up one, will be as follows, um, um, like this. Okay? This is our function. Now, how to create the gradient is, we will need partial derivative of this function in respect, and I'm just listing what we really need in order to create the gradient for the function. So in order to create that, we need to get the partial derivative of this one in respect to x, then the partial derivative of this one in respect to y, and then in respect to z. So all these three partial derivatives will be required. Why? Because the gradient for a function is uh, defined as uh, basically, uh, the partial der uh, derivative in respect to x uh, as first uh, entry of 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 a, of a vector. Okay, it will actually be um, a vector function that that is the gradient actually is a vector function. Okay, because what you really get is um, when you not enumerate it and you just get the general formula. It basically is made up of partial derivatives and i, j, k. So it really looks like a vector function, okay? So this is kind of interesting to, to view, but let me just finish the formula for it. Uh, maybe you already spotted the pattern, the idea is, what we do if we take the gradient of the function, what we do is partial derivative in respect to x uh, times i, which is the marker for the x uh, component of our vector. And then the partial derivative in respect to y uh, times j, plus partial uh, derivative in respect to z times k. Okay, so that's the idea. Just take the partial derivatives in respect to all three different variables of the function and then give it them the respective i, j, and k. So how to take this? Well, I'll just first take uh, the partial derivatives in order to <coughs> be able to then use this formula to just give the gradient. So gradient of the function requires these three. First, Partial derivative in respect to x will be y. This one is not nothing really, and then we have minus uh, sine x. Okay. Then partial derivative in respect to y of the same functions again will be uh, will be x plus two y z, and the third one doesn't even uh, get included in there. And the partial derivative in respect to z will be um, just y squared, just y squared. Okay, so just follow me this formula, delete it, and we'll be able to just plug it in. Remember, partial derivatives uh, to those three independent variables, uh, each multiplied by the corresponding i, j, or k. So, the gradient of this function that I gave you, we're going to be using these three partial derivatives, is the partial derivative of the function in respect to x, that is y minus sine x. Now, this is the x part, so it's times i plus, uh, or I can put the i in the front, so it's even more, you know, kind of readable, it doesn't really matter. Um, of course, it doesn't matter if you multiply i times this or this times i. It's up to you. Usually it's written like this, but you can even prefer to write it like this. Like, you put the i in front here, if maybe it's more easily. Um, uh, legible for you in pens. So the second part is uh, derivative in respect to y, which is x plus 2y, and of course put it into a parenthesis because we are multiplying the entire thing by the j, which basically says this is our y component of the vector. Okay? So uh, we go there, and now the part derivative in respect to z, which was uh, y squared. And we don't have to put that into parentheses, as it is just one term. If you multiply one term, uh, it gets multiplied uh, right, and you don't have to put it into parentheses like with these multiple term uh, partial derivatives that we did before. Okay, so just to sum up, 
what the gradient um, means when you want to calculate it. Okay, how to calculate it. Basically, if, um, I gave you an example of a function that has three independent variables. Uh, by the way, if you have a function of three dependent variables, the dependent one, like if you have a function of x, then the dependent one is y. If you have three independent, or x, y, and z are taken out as those inputs, then usually the function will be called omega, like this, okay, written like this. So, but it's just a, a side note, doesn't really matter, we could have done a uh, partial derivative of omega in respect to x. We just could call the function like this. Omega is usually the name for that fourth variable that um, is the dependent one for functions with three uh, independent variables. That's just a sign note. So we had this function of x, y, and z to look like this. Now we knew in order to create the gradient, to get the gradient of a function, partial derivative to all three uh, different um, independent variables and then link them, multiply them respectively with i, j, and k. For the x uh, partial derivative is going to be i, for the y partial derivative is j, and for the z partial derivative is k. Now that's what we did. We took um, the partial derivative with respect to x, this is the partial with respect to x, so we got y minus sine x multiplied by i. Then we did partial derivative with respect to y, we got uh, x plus 2y, um, 2yz, so sorry, this is like this, 2yz, and plus y squared is the third part, and it was the partial derivative in respect to z, multiplied by the k. So this is the thing, this is how we get gradients of a function, and what it really means, gradient, is basically, uh, it's a little bit hard to explain because it takes a little more time, but imagine, it always goes one, uh, degree lower as far as dimensions, okay? So this was a function in 4D, in four dimensions. Why? When we have three independent variables, the, the fourth variable basically um, tells us that if we have three independent variables, the function will have four dimensions. Okay? If we have two, if we just have function of x and y, which is equal to z usually, that is 3D function. If we have just x and y, uh, y dependent, then it's a uh, 2D on the all. So that's, that's, that's the idea. Now, we had we had three dependent, it's a 4D function. But the gradient, what it gives us is, it looks at it as a, as a 3D function, actually. So what this is, is it, this is going to help us very much uh, in, for example, um, obtaining, um, obtaining orthogonal uh, vectors to surfaces and and so on. It's going to be very useful. For example, if we have a surface and we get and, and we have a function that talks about the surface, then we are going to by the by the by the gradient we are going to get um, vectors that are orthogonal to level curves on that surface. That means we're going to get um, something that gives us ortho orthogonal vectors that are going to be the gradient, the general form of orthogonal vectors at any point to um, to a particular um, uh, level curves on that surface, but 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 uh, keep in mind that we had a surface that was 3D. Then the level curves uh, or orthogonality that's going to only be taken in, into account uh, at the width of two of 2D. That means uh, this always brings us the, the 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 gradient always brings us one degree lower, okay, one dimension lower. That means if we have a surface already um, and we want to get it. Or formula vector that surface will first have to, um, and that's going to be different examples. But basically, what you have to do, you have to, you have to imagine, you have to um, um, make it in a way that you basically bring the function one degree higher, and then you take the uh, the gradient of that. So you go back to those three dimensions in order to get um, um, or formula vector to a surface. For a gradient, you will first have to make that function out of which you're taking the, the, the gradient one dimension higher because the gradient always brings you one dimension lower. That means uh, it's not like you can take a gradient of a function and it will give you, even if it's a surface function, 3D function, which is already 4D, it will give you the, uh, the orthogonal vector, that surface, no. You actually have to bring it first that one dimension higher and then there are different methods for that and it's constantly more stuff. So keep that in mind, if, if you're more interested into uh, gradients, then of course there's going to be more, more work done with that. But keep in mind, this is the way you take uh, gradients of functions, it's really easy to do.